Hey folks, I'm Andre, also known as Medler. And I'm Jeremy, AKA Wright Brightman. Welcome back. We hope you all had a wonderful and happy holiday season, and we're really excited to welcome you to season 2024. Now, we're filming this video in early November, so anything that happens between now and the start of the season won't be covered in this video. Today, we're gonna to be joined by more folks from across the league team to talk about some of the things coming in 2024, like ranked updates, new champions, some information about Arcane Season 2, and some updates on esports. Now, before we get started, don't forget that when you jump into a game in five days, Summoner's Rift is gonna look and feel a little bit different. Get ready for some new objectives, map changes, and updates to the core item system. And as a reminder, Season Start Cinematic is gonna be releasing next week on January 10th. Hey everyone, I'm Matthew Long Harrison, the lead gameplay designer for League. I wanted to take a moment to talk to you all about some of our thoughts on Ranked, some of our learnings from the changes we made last year, and what we want to do this year to help make your climbs better for Season 2024. Last year, we added Emerald Tier and increased LP gains to help alleviate any pain from increasing the number of rank resets each year. And while we've seen an overall increase in match quality, there were some side effects that moved us away from where we want to take Ranked. We've seen much larger differences in visible ranks in games, meaning many of you saw players with different ranks in your matches, like a plat player in a silver game. So we're making some focused improvements on how the rank system evaluates player skill to reduce these situations. These changes will be going live when you start your rank climb next week. The changes should help resolve some other pain points, such as losing more LP than you gain, even with a positive ranked win rate overall, and also help with differentiating between Smurf accounts and new players. As always, we'll be closely monitoring these changes, as well as your feedback to make adjustments as needed. Best of luck in your climbs, and welcome to season 2024. I'm Lexi Gao, aka Raya Lexical, the Champions Team Lead. And I'm Soap May, also known as Soapbox, Production Lead on the Champions Team. We've been working on Skarner's update for a while now, and we've been polishing him up to be ready for his big day. Meanwhile, he's getting ready for some fun too. Last time we talked about Skarner, we showed his gameplay, but we never really talked about his lore. Skarner was a founding member of the Yuntal, where he helped guide and shape Ishtal into the prospering region it is now. He is, however, very suspicious of the outside world and believes that Ishtal should be isolated to be safe, and he will not hesitate to run down intruders to keep it that way. We are currently finishing up Skarner's VGU, and we can't wait for you to skitter across the rift in the first half of the year. After Skarner, we're working on two other champion updates. The first one is for a champion we haven't talked about before, but plays a pretty big role in a show that maybe you heard about. Arcane. We want to bring their Arcane version to the Rift with updated visuals and VO, while also giving some love to their gameplay. You can expect to see them early next year after the second season is over. As for what comes after the Arcane inspired BGU, we're excited to announce that we'll finally be tackling Shavana. She has a great theme and has become an iconic part of the League roster. Thus, we're thinking about refining and progressing who she is and tuning up her gameplay instead of a complete overhaul on her narrative and themes. Think more Udyr and less Skarner. But we want to be transparent about her timeline. Shivana's VGU will not be released until 2025, after the Arcane VGU. Okay, now on to the new champions. We've been teasing a cute, small ADC that will be swooping into the rift soon. Me Smolder, the fiery fledgling. Look at our cute little son. Oh no, it's a dragon! <gasps> Run away! <gasps> Fire! <laughs> at least I didn't end up in the tree again. Hi, I'm Smolder. Oh, my mom says hi too. Who's the best dragon? I'm the best dragon! Hey, Mom, what are the fire thingies next to my ears called? Oh, okay. Was that me? Whoa! Look what I could do! Holy <laughs> <laughs> Hey, where'd everybody go? 
everybody go? Oh, yeah. Did you see that, Mom? I smoked them. Fine. One of the goals we had for Smolder was to make a straightforward ADC. As all of the recent ADCs we've released are high skilled champs or very non traditional. Aphelios, Samira, Zeri, Nila, we want to fulfill the fantasy of a little dragon who can focus on honing his fire breathing skills. And while Smolder may be working on his skills, his mom is never too far in the distance and is always ready to make an appearance when he needs her the most. After Smolder, we'll be heading further north to cool off from all that dragon fire. Our Vestayan solo laner is someone we've been wanting to bring to the Rift for a while, but the last time we tried that development took a bit of a detour and we ended up with Silas. But not to worry, the Champions team is back on the case and is focusing on making a new mid-range mage. We have another champion in the works who should be a familiar face to all of you. But we're going to hand things over to Riot Brightmoon and Meddler to talk a little bit more about our new upcoming champion. Last year, we shared that Arcane Season 2 would be releasing globally this November. Everyone at Riot is really excited by the show, and we've been inspired to bring Arcane into game more. We're excited to show you a small preview of one of the things the League team's been working on. So the first bit of Arcane you'll be seeing in League will be Ambassa Madara. She'll bring Noxian domination to the Rift. And much like how she is in the show, she won't be for the faint of heart in game. Don't let her large stature fool you though, she brings both strength and speed, sidestepping attacks with surprising agility. And Ambessa is only the first piece of Arcane coming to League this year. To celebrate Arcane Season 2, we'll have Arcane-inspired gameplay and a new VGU, new skins, as well as a few other surprises. I am so excited for the new season. I hope you are too. Can we show them a clip? Maybe just one? Okay, 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 one, but, uh, but just a short one. Hey everyone, I'm Evan Humphreys, aka Riot Revenancer, the lead system designer for our motivations team. We're responsible for creating and maintaining the various systems around the game like loot, honor, and champion mastery, which is what I'm here to talk to you all about today. Champions are the most central part of League, and we love the dedication that a lot of you have to your mains. We want mastering champions to be a meaningful experience that lets you differentiate more between players who play champions some, and players who play them a ton. So, we're uncapping the leveling system and letting you show up exactly how much you play your favorite champions. Level 7 through 10 will unlock new versions of the Master Emote, and after that, we'll add an evolving number that displays your total Mastery level from 11 and beyond. And don't worry, your current Champion Mastery points will carry over to the new system. So if you've already grinded to Mastery 7 on your main, there's no need to do it again, and those of you with enough Mastery points will end up at even higher levels. We'll be back again as we get closer to launch in the first half of the year with more info on this updated system. Hey everyone, I'm Eduardo Cadmus Cortejoso, and I'm a team lead for game modes on League of Legends. Hi, I'm Selena Chu Chu Chang Liu, the delivery lead on the most team. So last year, we released Arena and we received a huge amount of support from all of you. We brought it back in December to test out some changes and make some improvements. We're happy to share, though, that it's coming back again in the first half of this year with even more improvements. Our goal for the next iteration of Arena is to increase champion diversity, improve game-to-game -game variants, and foster even more experimentation. One of our favorite parts of Arena is the ability to play some fun and wacky combinations that wouldn't and maybe shouldn't work in Summoner's Rift. 
So we want to encourage that with some more targeted changes to gameplay and game balance. The biggest change you'll see is that we're increasing the number of teams from four teams of two to eight teams of two for a total of 16 players in each game of Arena, making Arena a 2v2, v2, 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 v2. This means that you'll face different teams more often, have more chances at redemption, and maybe get out early or crush the competition if you're really doing well. You can also expect to see some new augments, new maps, and some other improvements that we're still right now exploring. Outside of Arena, we are also bringing back more game modes this year. Earth will be back for Lunar New Year, and then we'll be following that up with One for All. We'll be sure to update you later in the year about what modes are going to come out after that. Oh, and one last thing. Even with all the work happening on Arena last year, we still have something else cooking behind the scenes. We're experimenting with yet another new mode that, like Arena, will be a totally different take on core league gameplay. But unlike Arena, this will be a little bit more of a chill way to spend time with your friends. We don't want to spoil too much yet, so we'll be back later this year to share more. Good luck, have fun, and we'll see you in ARAM, Arena, Earth, OFA, and TBD. Last year, we spent some time behind the scenes working on updating League's anti-cheat and bot detection software, as our current version had fallen behind the times. This was compounded by the security breach earlier in the year, which increased our vulnerability to botting and cheating. And a pretty consistent piece of feedback that we've been hearing from you all is the high number of bots in games, disruptive smurfs and ranked, and an increase in scripting. We know this has been a consistent pain point in League, so it's been something we've been working on fixing. One of our goals this year is to maintain and improve the competitive integrity in all of your League games, whether it's in ranked or normals, Clash, Arena, whatever. So in late February or early March, we're bringing Vanguard to League. Vanguard is our proprietary anti-cheat and anti-botting software that's been active in Valorant since the beginning. We've seen a huge amount of success in their ability to catch and stop cheaters in their games, and we expect to see similar results when we implement it in League. Similar to Valorant's version of Vanguard, leagues will run at the kernel level. This is becoming standard for strong anti-cheat software in gaming, as cheat and bot makers are quick to adapt. If you don't run at this level, they will, and thereby evade all of the anti-cheat software as a result. Now, Vanguard offers us the ability to catch bots and cheaters as quickly and effectively as possible. It also gives us the opportunity to do things like hardware ban offenders and terminate matches in which a cheater is detected. You know, refunding, loss of LP for everybody except the person cheating, of course. Now, we know that there's a question and concern of data privacy around kernel-level anti-cheat. This is something that came up with Vanguard and Valorant as well, and we want to take a moment to tackle those concerns up front here. Vanguard does not collect or process any personal information differently from our current anti-cheat software. We don't need or want to know anything more about you or your machine other than what is necessary to maintain integrity when playing our games. Now, if you already have Vanguard installed because you've played Valorant, you won't need to do anything else, and you can continue as normal. But if you haven't, starting in a few weeks, you'll be required to install Vanguard in order to play League. We know that this may be a meaningful change, but we're very confident it will lead to an overall better League experience for everyone. We'll be sure to communicate with you all as the changes go live, and to let you know how things are going afterwards. All right, we're going to hand things back off to the dev team now for an update on some of the skins coming to League this year. Like trying to craft a unique fantasy where you can't have any kind of costuming on the stretch locations and like the thighs, oh, the knees, the elbows, so you're kind of isolated to a Hey everyone, I'm Stephanie, 100 Piece Nuggets Leong, the Skins team lead. And I'm Thomas Ranby, aka Riot Hylia, the concept art lead for Skins. Today we're going to talk a bit about some of the upcoming thematics for League, some of our goals for 2024, and we're going to give you all an update on our ASUs. But first, I believe we owe you an updated prestige skin list. Yes, we do. Ta-da! Oh. In the first half of the year, you can expect prestige skins for Rakan, Ezreal, Kindred, Evelyn, and Kale in that order. We'll be back later in the year to give you all an update on the second half of the year. We also wanted to give you all an update on our two ASUs. Hmm. Leeson's base is finalized, and we've been working through his extensive skin catalog. We spent a lot of time testing out his animations to make sure we didn't impact his smooth gameplay, and have been sure to similarly focus on this with yeah. his skins. We're really excited to put him and his newly unbroken neck <laughs> into your hands, and you can expect to bring him onto the Rift in early May. 
We did want to give you a heads up that we have run into a few challenges with Timo. Such a troublemaker. Mischievous. Ugh, seriously. His ASU is taking us a bit longer than we originally intended, and we're currently figuring out our updated timelines, but we'll be back with an update later this year with a sweeper to let you know when to expect an updated Swiss Scout on the Rift. All right, now on to the new and returning skin thematics of the year. So first up, we're gonna be celebrating the Lunar New Year with a brand new thematic called Heaven Scale, which pays homage to the rich cultural heritage of the holiday. In the world of Heaven Scale, a curious court of deities take on human guises and descend from their palaces in the clouds to take part in the mortal celebrations below. So Heaven Scale's design fantasy skews a bit more heavily into ancient historical divinity and garments in order to distance itself from our more modern takes on the Lunar New Year, like Lunar Beasts or Firecracker. We wanted to take care to preserve the majestic and beautiful designs while also keeping a fun and celebratory tone in line with the spirit of the holiday. We also have another brand new thematic coming up that delves into a world where primal instinct reigns supreme called Primal Ambush. Primal Ambush draws heavy inspirations from the refined skill of martial artists and the raw, fierce strength of tigers themselves. We wanted to show some love to our Southeast Asian players in particular with this thematic. We really drew a ton of inspiration from that region, the fashions of those cultures, where tigers naturally live and hold a great deal of cultural significance. We'll also have the return of some established thematics like porcelain, recent favorite fairy court, as well as some well-loved thematics we haven't visited in a few years, like Project and Blood Moon. And you can expect to see all of these come out before summer this year. We've also been taking a look at some improvements we can make outside of just what new skins are releasing. So some of our older legendaries, for instance, were released before we started adding content, such as legendary borders. Uh, so we're gonna be going back to add them to skins that missed out. This includes skins such as Broloff, Corporate Mundo, and Dragon Trainer Tristana. Trist will actually be live in just a few days. And finally, we have some skins coming out for champions who haven't had as much love in a little bit. As of filming, Ramus is currently sitting okay, in the Thousand Day Club, and Olaf is hot on his tail. All right, well, that's it for us for now. Uh, we're gonna hand things over to the eSports team who will give you an update on the competitive side of League that we definitely should have been drafted for. Yep, absolutely. Silver, silver two. <laughs> I am iron. <laughs> <laughs> Hi everyone, I'm Naz Alataha. And I'm Chris Greeley. And we are so excited to kick off the 14th season of Lolly Sports. And we want to give you a look at some of our plans for 2024. So let's start by talking about our global events, MSI and Worlds. We want our international events to have a strong regional representation so that the best teams from each region can fight it out on the global stage. This year we're making it so that there are three base slots for the LPL, LCK, LEC and LCS at Worlds, with new ways for teams and regions to earn additional slots. The LLA, CBLOL, PCS, and the VCS will have their slots remain unchanged. And we're keeping the same double ELIM format from MSI 2023, but we're going to up the stakes even more this year. For the first time ever, the winning MSI team will be awarded a guaranteed spot at Worlds which also counts as an additional slot for their region. And the next best performing region at MSI will secure an additional world seed for their region. Yeah, and we can't wait to see the increased competition at MSI this year. And while we're talking about MSI, we wanted to share that this year's MSI will be held from May 1st through the 19th in Chengdu, China. This is the first time we've brought a global Lolly sports event to this vibrant city, and we're so excited to see the amazing crowds there cheer on their favorite teams. And we'll be back with more updates on MSI the closer we get to the event. Last year in Korea, we announced that Worlds would be returning to Europe, with the finals taking place in London, England at the O2 Arena. Today, we wanted to let you know where the rest of the tournament will be held. Well, we'll be kicking off Worlds in Berlin at our newly remodeled eSports Arena for the play-ins and Swiss stages. Then we'll head to the Adidas Arena in Paris, France for quarterfinals and semifinals. Fans brought so much energy to the Paris finals in 2019, and we're really excited to see what you all do for not just one, but two stages of Worlds there. Worlds will run from September 24th through November 2nd. And we'll be back later this year as we get closer to the event to announce ticket sales dates. Now, as we embark on the 2024 season, we are so proud to commemorate 14 remarkable years of Lolly Sports. 
Throughout this decade and a half, we've witnessed pro players from around the world leave their mark, displaying incredible resilience, mastery of League of Legends gameplay, and inspiring millions of fans across the globe. To celebrate those who have made a lasting impact on the game, the sport, and the community, and really honor their legacies, we are proud to introduce the LOL Esports Hall of Legends. There are a number of pro players worthy of being inducted into our unique version of a Hall of Fame. So we've gathered an independent voting panel of esports industry veterans and experts from every region around the world to vote and select our very first inductee. Each year, those inducted into the Hall of Legends will have their historic careers celebrated both IRL and in game. Now we're currently collecting votes and we'll be back later this year to share more. And finally, all of our regional leagues are gearing up for the start of the 2024 competitive season. You can tune in on lolesports.com beginning January 13th to keep up with all of your favorite teams and pros. We can't wait to watch the 2024 LOL Esports season with all of you. Good luck and have fun on your climbs. Thank you in advance for tuning in and supporting your favorite teams and leagues. Now, here's Riot Bright Moon and Medler to wrap us up. All right, before we go, we wanted to remind you that we're celebrating a special birthday for League this year. We are turning 15. We are so close to being able to finally drive a car. Oh, in the US at least. <laughs> but we're looking forward to celebrating with you all later this year. We're not doing new game announcements this time. This year is all about League and celebrating our 15th birthday with all of you. So look forward to the celebrations coming in October. And as a reminder, don't forget to check out the dev blogs that go into more detail on some of the topics we discussed today. We'll also be back with our regular dev updates as usual after this video. So we'll be seeing you soon. Best of luck on your climbs and welcome to season 2024.